Hi, I'm David Har, aka Diego May, and welcome to my Dragon Rail video. Built some years ago, the Dragon Rail was inspired by the Railgun from the Quake series of video games by id Software. This video is intended to showcase the design and operation of this simulated weapon. At the time, I hadn't gotten around to producing a video explaining its construction and operation. Ergo, this is what this is. You'll see the innards of the Railgun and what makes it tick. Much of the description is casual technical jargon. The entire video will last mm, about 15 minutes or so. And yes, you did catch me reading a cue card from above the camera. Enjoy! When I put together this incarnation of the Dragon Rail, uh, I had used some salvaged red LED sign boards. There are two other boards that go along with this that I uh, ended up tearing apart to use for the display. This is the master board with uh, the breakout cable assembly that I had used to uh, reverse engineer it so I can figure out exactly how this is going to uh, work. Um, it uses a sequential timer and what have you where each each row is uh, activated and like an XY plot and then each dot is activated and then another clock scrolls that pixel going across and then each row each row has its data uh, activated as it goes down so what I did was I, I took each one and I slit each one down and cut them and br bridge them and uh, using the existing uh, circuit schematic was able to come up with the pattern for the display. So this is the heart of the Dragon Rail. Got the timer ICs on the lower left, which controls the display in the upper right. Um, there are 15 rows of uh, LEDs. Uh, every other row goes in one direction from right to left or left to right, respectively. Uh, two of the timer ICs control the speed at which those will rotate. Uh, another two um, operate as a uh, kind of a random uh, number generator, not really a number generator, but it just throws some bits out there. So the way that it spits it out, it kind of appears random. Um, by having that effect like that, you can see it almost has a rolling effect as it scrolls from front to back. Um, two of the other uh, timer ICs operate the clock speed for the audio, the two audio chips for the hum sound or the, the idle sound as well as the firing sound which we'll be illustrating later. Um, the two trim pots on the back of the device allow the user to change the speed at which the, dis the display can move. Um, and just like as such. So you get just a rolling scroll if you go in and get to one setting. Or if you slow it way down, you can have this really kind of a smooth, blank type of uh, effect. Now the the LEDs look pretty uh, polka dotted, you might say. That's with that. But when it is together, that display is on the top, so it diffuses it a bit and adds more uh, uh, to the effect. There's also another one of those um, devices uh, underneath for the lower effect. The device I'm pointing to here is a 12 volt motor so that when the device is fired and you hit the trigger, you can kind of see it spinning in there. So it gives a, a tactile feedback of uh, that something might be going on in there. This is one of the two LED driver boards. Um, this one on this side controls the underside lighting effects. the driver board for the top side lighting effects. There are two controller boards. One, The upper one is for the audio and the lower board is for the display effects from the LEDs. And on the right you can see a, a, a silver canister here which is uh, the amplifier for the speaker which I will show you in a minute. Uh, the two IC ICs here 
control the, the audio of uh, the background hum when the dragon rail is, is at idle, which can be toggled on and off. Uh, the other one is the fire sound when you actually hit the trigger. Um, I will zoom out a hair so you can see the speaker. Uh, on the speaker you can see there is um, a small module with LEDs uh, and in the center of those uh, that cluster is a, a red laser pointer. Um, so when it fires the ring of LEDs will go out and the laser pointer will illuminate. Um, I will turn on the background hum yeah, so you can kind of hear that going. And when you fire the device, you can see the LEDs will go out and the laser pointer will fire. This video is to demonstrate the text fixture that I used uh, for the internal circuitry of the Dragon Rail. Um, it had uh, aided me in uh, checking my clock signals, etc. Um, it is uh, keyed a little bit to fit in there, so I'll demonstrate that plug it into the test uh, port. This is uh, only accessible when the device is uh, taken apart. And I'll turn it on. See the numbers uh, change as needed. Depending on the frequency you'll see them going so fast that they just look like eights on the outer two. Slow it down. Um, those are showing the uh, the lines of the LEDs that are uh, illuminated. Uh, the center one is a fixed number of sort because the, it's run off a different clock signal that uh, I probably won't be just, uh, describing here. It's where the voltage regulator resides that converts uh, the 12 volt input uh, into uh, the 5 volt re references for the, the display circuitry. On the back of the dragon rail, you can see the main power switch. Uh, on, there's a big red switch there. Uh, this is an auxiliary power port for just a standard 12 volt supply, uh, rated at least one amp or more. Uh, this this switch here toggles the uh, background sound if you're just having it displayed or whatnot. Uh, this is the power LED. Uh, I found something kind of fancy, multicolored, flashing, blah blah blah. Uh, these are the uh, tuner. Uh, knobs which control the speed and frequency of the display by adjusting those in different ways uh, you can have uh, different effects and down here is the uh, 12 volt power port for a portable power supply here we have the stock on the back of the rail gun that black strip that runs down is the mounting fixture for attaching a uh, mini 12 volt battery that you can attach underneath uh, through the use of a couple bolts uh, the cord here will just plug right into that auxiliary port on the back and you're good to go. Uh, you just need to have this, you know, recharge the battery with a standard 12 volt charger. It does add a little bit of weight to it, but uh, it makes it portable. These are the power options for the railgun. The one on the right, that 2.2 amp hour uh, 12 volt battery, the railgun uh, takes about an amp, so about an hour and a half to two hours of use. The one on the left is a nine and a half uh, amp hour battery, and so it adds significant uh, amount of time for you to use this thing. And uh, you can sling that one over your shoulder and uh, actually use them both at the same time with this uh, power adapter. You can sling both of them together, and then you just uh, have the other end plugged into the rail gun. And so you probably have about 10 hours of uh, use if you want to carry that thing around for that long. I painted the auxiliary battery pack to closely match the, the railgun with the same paint scheme and it in itself also has some visual effects. Turn the power on, you can see that going. Get the light. And it's just a small detail for that auxiliary dealy. Let's go ahead and open this thing up and I'll show you what the inside of that display looks like. It's got the circuitry for the, the display, uh, the power connector, and uh, the main power switch for the auxiliary battery. When you are done using the railgun for the day, you can easily plug in your charge adapter and charge both batteries at once. Simple 12 volt charger. 
and the housing has been put back onto the rail gun to, uh, to protect all the circuitry. Um, you can see the cutouts there for the, the, the upper display. I can show you the lower display. Uh, the lower display here. You just notice on the front, you don't have the speaker assembly quite in yet, but you can see right in there and see the different things going. And if I hit the trigger, you can see the lower LED change state. Just fit right on there as such. And it is affixed with two screws on either side. Hold that firmly in place. And the lower one has one of its own. I just reaffixed the, the display diffusers to the housing. That uh, Not only does it act as that uh, diffusing for the LEDs, but it also uh, acts as a retainer for the, the inner uh, frame of the Dragon Rail to the uh, outer casing. And the final uh, step for reassembly is uh, on the back where they meet, or where the gold housing meets uh, part of that rear frame there. Now, there's kind of a gap, which kind of, it happens for these hand fabricated devices. So we had uh, made a slip ring type of dealie that we can uh, slip onto there. It goes on snugly. It will fill in that gap quite nicely. Thus sealing it off. This is a shot of the front aperture. Uh, the speaker lies right behind that grill, and uh, you can plainly see the uh, cluster of LEDs and the laser pointer in the center. Uh, the tricky part was uh, putting this together to have that angle, you know, that little dramatic cut. I think it turned out okay. For the paint of the railgun, I used, uh, I don't remember what brand it was, but it was one of those textured paints uh, in a rattle can. And uh, I gave it a little bit extra thickness and had uh, the housing sit vertical so that the paint would run a little bit and give an interesting kind of texture. I discovered this after doing a few test uh, sprays on a sample piece. Some of the finishing touches I did was the application of these dragon stickers. Um, I found these on uh, the internet with a little trim and cutting. They seem to fit the space quite nicely. And there's one on either side. So thanks for watching my video. We hope you enjoyed it. For more information about the Dragon Rail or other projects that I've done, please visit my website at dknyte.com. The link is also in the description. Thanks. Frag safe.